Hey everybody, I'm glad you're here. I'm super excited because I'm about to get my very first Tetris. When this piece slots into place, all four rows along the bottom are going to clear, and I'm going to be in very good shape. Wait a second. Those rows didn't clear at all. It turns out we haven't programmed that yet. All right, what we want to do in this video is make it so that when our piece falls and slots into place, uh, the rows that are all full filled up clear. That's how Tetris works, and if it doesn't behave that way, the game is not very interesting. Look it, I could clear three more rows if the game actually worked. Unfortunately, it doesn't. So let's try this. We already have some code in place that uh, when the piece hits the bottom, it, it gets saved to the grid, this sort of grid list, and then we generate a new pick. Piece. So this little else statement here, this is where, and we're inside of our update falling piece block, this little else statement is where we are locking a piece into place. And what we want to do is say, when that happens, we also want to check to see if there are any filled rows. If after we lock our piece in, after we save it to the grid, if any rows are filled, we should clear them out and replace them with empty rows. So uh, in order to do that, I'm going to make a custom block called clear filled rows. Yes, and we'll make it run without screen refresh. Just, I don't know, for the fun of it. So clear filled rows, actually I think we're going to need it to run without screen refresh to be fast. Clear filled rows is going to do two things. Uh, it's going to start by saying, uh, let me find all of the clear cleared rows. We're going to detect them and we'll store the sort of list items, like maybe in this case, rows 22, 21, 20, 18, 17, and 16 are all cleared. I think that's which ones are cleared. In that case, it would save all of those numbers into a list. And then after that, we sort of clear those rows based on the values in the list. So let's start by finding the uh, filled rows. We'll say find filled rows. Whoops, find filled filled. Find filled rows is going to be our custom block. And this is going to run as the first step to clearing the filled rows. We're going to find the filled rows and then we can clear them. So in order to find the filled rows, uh, we need to first start by knowing how to detect whether or not a row is full. And we know that a row is full if it doesn't contain any zeros, right? Because a zero represents an empty space. We want to find the list items where there are no zeros at all. So I'm going to write a little script here that can check whether or not a row is full. And we'll just manually for now make it check row 22, and then we'll go from there. So I'm going to say that n is going to count sort of which letter of the particular list item we're looking at. So we'll start by looking at letter 1, or the far left column. And so what we'll do is we'll say, take item, whatever item we're looking at of the grid, whichever row we're looking at. And in our script, when we want to find the filled rows, we'll look at all of them inside of a repeat loop. But for now, we'll just manually look at item number 22, look at row 22. And we want to say get letter n of that item. And we know that if letter n, if the particular column that we're looking at, is equal to 0, that means that our row is not filled. So if this is the case, then we know that our row is not filled. If it's not a zero, that doesn't necessarily mean that our row is filled though. It could be that the first column that we look at has a five in it, but the next one has a zero. And so we can't just necessarily do an if else statement. Uh, we only know that if it is a zero, it's definitely uh, an empty row or a not filled row. If it's not a zero, we aren't quite sure what to do. So in order to keep track of all this information, I'm just going to make a variable called isFilled. And I'll make it for this sprite only to keep things clean. And at the beginning, we're going to assume that the row is filled. We're going to say, yes, it's true that the row is filled. But then as we sort of loop through each of the different columns, if we ever find one that's a zero, we're going to say, actually, we were too optimistic in the beginning. It turns out that is filled is false. If we encounter a zero, the row is not filled. So we'll start at item one. Uh, that's what our n is, that's our column. And we'll repeat through all the different columns and run this little if statement. So we'll say repeat 10 because there are 10 different columns. 
Uh, and so n will first be one. We'll be looking at letter one, column one of the row, then column two, then column three, then column four. And if any of them are zero, then we know that the row is not filled. But if all of them are not zero, if they're all sort of filled spaces, then we'll never run this block and is filled will stay true. So when we get to the end of this script, we will know uh, by checking the is filled block, we will or variable, we will know whether item 22, row 22 of the grid is filled. So if I click this, we can see it's true. The row is filled and that's correct. This is a row that we wanna clear, that we wanna make disappear. So what we wanna do then is say, uh, if it's filled, let's add it to the list. We're gonna make a list of filled rows and these are gonna be sort of the row numbers that are filled. So we'll start when we're finding our filled rows by deleting all of them from the list. And then we'll say, look at if 22 is filled, if, if item 22, if this row is filled, which we know because is filled is equal to true, if row 22 is filled, then we're gonna add 22 to the filled rows. Um, and so there we go, we added 22 because row 22 is filled. Now the problem of course with this is that we're only checking row 22. We wanna check all of the different rows. And so just like we made a for loop using n, uh, we're gonna make a loop using i as well. And i is just gonna represent the row in the grid that we're checking. And so we'll start at row one and we'll repeat through checking all the different rows. Um, we will change i by one and we will repeat 22 for the 22 different rows. And so inside of this loop that starts with i, our row number at one and goes all the way through 22, inside of there we'll do this check every single time. And of course now we need to use the i variable to represent the row. Instead of always checking row 22, we'll be checking row i. And so now if we run this find filled rows, you can see it gives us, wow, 12 different rows that are filled. Is that right? We have row 22, 21, 20, 19. Why does it say 18? 18 doesn't look right. I don't think 18 is filled. If we go to row 18, row 18 has a zero in it. Let's see, what am I doing wrong here? All right, I found my mistake here. Uh, I forgot to change n by one. So hopefully all of you here were yelling at me that in our repeat 10 loop, even though I thought we were checking 10 different columns, we actually weren't. We were just checking the first column 10 times. Uh, but now if we put this change n by one, I hope you all noticed. I hope you were following along and saying, that won't work, Josh, you're doing it wrong. Uh, but now if we find filled rows, we get seven rows, which feels more correct. We have 22, 21, 20, and 19. Those bottom four are all filled. 18 is not filled. That's why it's not in the list. But then 16 and 15 are. 17, 16, and 15, yes. Those three are filled. And then the rest are not. All right, so this find filled rows block is now working. Uh, but after we find the filled rows, we still need to clear them. And part of the trick here is that you can't just replace the row with a zero because you need, or with, you know, all empty zeros because you need the rows on top to fall down. So uh, we'll do a little I here, a little loop. And this loop is going to loop through each of the filled rows. So we'll say we got to repeat the length of the filled rows list and change I by one. Of course, we have to do the change I by one. I missed the changing N by one, but I'll remember this time. So we're gonna, this will loop through and have i be number one, then two, then three, then four, then five, then six, then seven, or however many times it needs to, to get to all the filled rows. So then we wanna say, look at item i of filled rows. So that'll give us 15, then 16, then 17, then 19, 20, 21, and 22. So each time through this loop, this variable, this value, will give us one of the row numbers that we need to check. Um, now what we wanna do is delete that particular uh, row from the grid. So this, i is the item in this list. So getting the particular item in the list will give us the item in this list. It's a little bit confusing, but this will give us uh, which row we need to delete from the grid. 
So we're deleting the entire row, but when we do that, now our grid is not going to be the right size. It's going to be only 20 run rows tall. So when we do that, uh, we also need to insert a new row at the top. So we'll say insert a row full of zeros. We're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 zeros. And we're going to insert it at item 1. It's going to become the new top row. And everything else will sort of shift down the list. So we're going to delete, and then we're going to insert. And it's important that the insert comes after. If the insert was first, then we would be deleting the wrong item. We'd be deleting the row above what we want to delete. The other potential problem here, the other thing that's a little bit tricky, is that as we delete rows, the other list items here, the other numbers that we want to delete, could become wrong. Uh, fortunately, I think because we're deleting from the top down, we're deleting 15, then 16, then 17, then 19, and so on, um, that won't be a problem. If we were deleting 22 first, and then everything shifted down, then when we went to delete 21, we would be deleting the row that used to be row 20. So that would be a problem. But because our filled rows are sort of in this order, going up in value, uh, I don't think that's going to be a problem. But that's something to look out for if you're making a similar type of script yourself. All right, I think I'm going to hide this filled rows variable. I think now uh, our filled rows should clear uh, when they appear. So remember, every single time that we're locking a piece into place, we're checking for filled rows. And then, if there are any, hopefully we're going to be clearing them as well. Now it's going to take me a second, but here we go. This is going to be our first opportunity to potentially clear a row. So if our script works, it should find the filled rows. Hmm, it did not quite delete them the way that we want it to. It looks like our insert didn't work, which is a little bit strange. Because um, now we have a length of 21 instead of 22. Oh, we're inserting into the wrong list. Hopefully you noticed that as well. I've made a couple of mistakes this video. Hopefully you were yelling at me for all of them, or angrily commenting, perhaps. I think now in this case we should be good, though. If we get a filled row, uh, we did see that it deleted correctly. It deleted the right row. Um, but then it wasn't quite sure what to do because we didn't insert a new one in its place. All right. I'm loving this down arrow feature because it lets me get to clearing some rows a lot faster. All right, let's see. It should delete the bottom row, and it did. Beautiful. So you can see that because we're using these lists and drawing the entire screen with pen, it's actually pretty straightforward to do this row clearing. Here comes another one, hopefully. Yeah, and you can imagine if we had started out right, off the, right out of the gates when we were creating our project using costumes or sprites to create these tiles, it would be really hard to clear the different rows. Because what we want to do, here we'll clear two at a time now. See if this works. We should end up with just the green piece remaining. Yes. If we had made these using costumes, where each costume was the shape of a piece, um, the problem is that then when we try to sort of cut different pieces apart, uh, which is what happens when you clear rows, you might end up with half of a piece remaining, half of it just gone. Um, that would be really hard to do with costumes. And so this is why... Uh, when people, you know, talk about pen projects being really hard to create, um, you know, in some cases they're right that doing things with pen is harder, but in many cases it's actually easier. It gives you a little bit more power, and then you can do some cool stuff down the road. It opens up more opportunities too. It's also kind of nice to do pen projects just because uh, it actually is a better, it's closer to the way that real games are made, where you sort of are, are rendering, or I guess at least... Um, real rendering happens, although sometimes in certain game engines it happens behind the scenes. All right, there we go. Three rows at once with a gap. One of the rows that wasn't quite filled stuck around, but two above it and one below it did clear. I'm feeling very good about this feature, and I think we're ready to move on to something new in the next video.